So Corbin and I have come across to prehistoric remains of uh, well, toilet rock. what appears to be toilet rock. A toilet. The most coolest rock you've ever seen in your life. So it could be natural, or it could be man carved. But there's nothing. There's no hole in the basin, so it would just fill up, and that's all she wrote. Morning from just outside of Moab, Utah. We're headed into Arches National Park. We're able to see the park and some of the arches from our campground, Arch View. And uh, we've been pretty excited all night. Maybe that's why we didn't sleep very well. I think every one of us was up about like 4.30 and then... Three. I was up, I three. Was up at three and two to go back to sleep. <laughs> yep, see? Maybe it's the elevation, the dry, I don't know, but I, I like to think it's the excitement. But yeah, we're getting ready. We're gonna go into the entrance and do the windy road that Suzanne is really excited about. And uh, go do some hiking. Arches National Park is located 10 minutes north of Moab, Utah. The 76,000 acre park is home to over 2,000 arches and hundreds of other rock formations. The park has hiking trails everywhere and for all different fitness and skill levels. Many of the trails fall into the easy to moderate categories and will take you to some of the most beautiful rock formations you've ever seen. As a family, we tend to go with the easy and moderate hikes, and we're gonna show you the best trails to get to the best sites. Our trip to Arches was over four days, and this episode will give you a great overview of where to go, what to see, and what you're in for. We chose to start at the far end of the park and work our way back. Day one included our longest drive and would take us to the Devil's Garden area and the sand dune, skyline, and broken arches. As always, your day at a national park starts at the entrance. If you don't have a national park pass, your daily fee for per vehicle will run you $30. Get a park pass. A link to getting a pass is in our description. Good morning, how are you? Good. Like a map? Yes, please. Thank you. Right. Take care. Thank you. As you enter the park, you're going to go on a winding uphill drive that has amazing views. Definitely go early so you can catch the morning light and miss the crowds. It's an 18 mile drive to the Devil's Garden Trailhead and will take you about 45 minutes if you don't make any stops. The trailhead gives you access to multiple arches and leads you to trails ranging from easy to difficult. If you stick to the easy trails, you're still going to see some amazing arches. The tunnel and pine tree arch spurs off the main trail but are short, easy walks. The Landscape Arch is the largest in North America and also marks the end of the easy portion of the trail. It's a great spot to turn around and head back. We made it to the end of the, a little bit past what is it, the panoramic arch. This is the Landscape Arch. Landscape Arch. The Landscape Arch. I finally remembered something. Yeah. Um, 
And then from here on out, it's kind of primitive trails and just looking at... Like, no trail. Yeah. Isn't but it's a, it was a good hike, I think. Um, it's about a mile and a half from the trailhead out to here. And uh, it's pretty actually easy, easy trails. There's a couple slopes, but that's about it. So once again, we went someplace early, and it's a good thing we did because the uh, parking lot's full. Look at that. As you head south, make sure to stop at Skyline Arch. The 0.4 mile hike will take you to the bottom of the arch. The next stop we recommend is at the Sand Dune and Broken Arch Trail. The 0.3 mile loop to see the Sand Dune Trail is easy, but it can be a tight squeeze in places. Once there, it's often crowded, so be patient. Broken Arch sits a mile further down the trail. It's a great place to stop in the shade and relax. Good morning from day two at Arches. Uh, this morning, uh, right now, we're actually just outside the visitor center I'm waiting for Corbin and Susanna to get back. But uh, we're driving to the park a little bit before eight, which is a great time. The sun's still coming up. Uh, it's nice and cool. It's September, so uh, really good weather. Right now it's only 57 degrees, and that's perfect. Because uh, in a couple hours, it's gonna be, I think it's supposed to be 85 today. But today we're going to go see uh, the Delicate Arch and do some more hiking. The Delicate Arch Viewpoint Trailhead is a little over 14 miles inside the park and is where we chose to start day two. There are three options to see this beautiful arch. We chose the one mile upper viewpoint trail, which includes steps, lots of them. Viewing the park's tallest freestanding arch will make the effort worthwhile. Delicate Arch is iconic and people come from around the world to see it. One area many people don't see though is the Salt Valley Overlook. There aren't arches and it may not stand out to people, but it is well worth the stop. We are the only ones here. No, the only kid in this park. You're not the only kid in the park. You don't know that. I haven't seen a whole lot of kids here, though. That's cool. I think it's because they're in school, so you've got, like, the... a little less family and a little bit more, um, you know, like, retirees and... <laughs> yeah, a little less family, a little more rock and roll. <laughs> I haven't seen a whole lot of rock and roll here. This is the, the Salt Valley Overlook. And our, was it Gypsy? She downloaded an app. It's called Gypsy. It's not free. Guide. Gypsy Guide. It's not free, but it has all these G, uh, GPS waypoints. So as you're driving through the national parks, it'll tell you what's going on, things to stop at and see. And, and the gentleman narrating it said that uh, if you want to get away from the noise and people, this is a good place because it's, it's not very popular. But, uh, I don't know, it's... It is peaceful. It's also a great place to see birds. You know what they call two crows in love? Chromance. That's a nice little good one. That was silly. And right now they're on that rock, so what they're doing is chromancing the stone. Oh my gosh.
Our next stop is the window section. If you only have a short time in the park, this is a great place to go. There are multiple arches and other rock formations in this area, and the combined 1.5 mile trail will take you past most of them. The half mile loop to double arch is wheelchair accessible and takes you to the tallest and second largest arch in the park. It's also a great place to wander around, climb, and just take in the views. The window section sits opposite of the double arch and the one mile walk is easy for any level of hiker. This section is home to the north and south windows along with turret arch which is awesome from every angle. It's also where we closed out our second day in arches. doing a one mile trail around the windows. This is the north window. And right now it feels like it's about 90 degrees outside, but you get in the shade and it, it drops about 20 degrees. It's amazing. And the view through there, I mean, it's really, it's a window into a, a whole nother area. It's beautiful. We are at the Park Avenue formations and we kind of went up against our normal get up early, get out in the park early and we went late afternoon. It's 90 degrees but in the shade it only feels like it's in the 70s. Right, we're going to do the mile path which is supposed to be primitive but we're heading down this awesome staircase right now and we're going to walk down Park Avenue. Park Avenue was named because it looks like buildings lining a street. The two mile moderate trail takes you right through the center of the Park Avenue and gives you spectacular views of these amazing rock formations. If you're in the park near sunset, our next stop was the place to be. The Fiery Furnace is a permit-only hike and permits are limited. It's easy to get lost along the trail, so make sure you're well prepared if you decide to take the challenge. We chose the easier route and experienced the Fiery Furnace from the viewpoint. The spot is an excellent location to capture sunsets. The fading light reflecting off the red rocks gives a fiery appearance, and if you're patient, you just may see it. It's our last morning in Moab, and uh, we've had the last few days just a lot of windstorms. So we just had some home days, got some things done, worked on videos and um, some blog stuff. And uh, Susanna hasn't been feeling that great, so she's back at home today, and Corbin and I are taking our last day. We're gonna go have some guy time, and we're gonna go back into Moab, and we're gonna go hike back up to Delicate Arch, but we're gonna take that one hike that a few people in town told us you gotta do it once in your life. And 
So I've been telling him a lot, hey, you know, the reason we're doing these things are some of these things are their once in a lifetime opportunities and we want you to see and experience. So time to kind of put our money where our mouth is. So I'm gonna take them out and do what people say you gotta do once in your lifetime. The delicate arch trailhead starts 13 miles inside the park and getting there early makes for a cooler hike, great lighting and less people. The three mile trail is rated as difficult and may not be a great trail for those that are afraid of heights. The beginning of the trail takes you by Wolf Ranch. This early 1900s site gives you a glimpse of what life was like in this area over 100 years ago. The trail itself is filled with stairs, steep inclines, and even a cliffside walk. If you do decide to take the trail, make sure you carry water with you. Make sure you take the time for breaks along the way. You ready to go? We only had like a couple seconds, right? Yeah. Ooh. We gotta go up there. Look. We gotta go up there. Would you say this trail has been strenuous? I'm just trying to watch even more. Difficult. Yeah. Exhausting. Yes. Tiring. Yes. Does it make you sore? Yes. Does it make you happy to have done it? Not really. Really? You're literally walking on the side of a cliff right now. Yeah. Yeah, your mom would have not liked this. Morning. Morning. Look what you made it to. Yep. Look what you did today. There are other ways to see Delicate Arch, but none of them compare to this one. If you have enough time, and can make the hike, we can't recommend it enough. Was it, was it worth it? I do. Yeah. I mean, you get a nice breeze, at least. You do get a very nice breeze, yeah. After your half mile walk, I mean, a mile and a half walk. Arches National Park became our favorite national park, and there's something for everyone there. This is one place to add to your bucket list. We're just leaving Arches National Park for the last time. And uh, Corbin and I just did that uh, amazing hike up to Delicate Arch. It was amazing. And he was kind of upset the whole way up. He didn't want to do it. It was too hard. He had to push himself. And then he got up to the top and said, this was worth it. And uh, just being able to spend some father-son time go see something as amazing as, as that uh, it makes everything we're doing worthwhile walking away from you know nine to five jobs and, and the house the big house and all this stuff and moving into at least for the next two years or a year and a half of what we have left moving into a travel trailer to see the u.s and see canada and experience that and then move on and start traveling the world Share that time with your kid is, is priceless and uh, you don't have to leave your house. You don't have to sell everything uh, to go do that. Just take a few minutes of your day, go for a hike, go for a walk, go throw the ball, play catch, go swimming. But make sure
sure you spend time here with your kids and make sure that you listen to them, even when all they want to talk about right now is Fortnite. That's um, not what I'm just talking about. <laughs> but make sure you spend time. Because pretty soon they're going to be too old, they're going to be out of the house, moving on with their lives. And, that, that 18 years or however long they, they live in your house with you, you're not going to get that back. Join us next week as we head to Cortez, Colorado and Mesa Verde National Park. Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.